Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, dear friends, uh, the topic that is assigned to me for this uh, particular session is AI tools for academic research. So, uh, we will be talking about the importance of AI and different AI tools. So, before uh, we actually begin the session, by next uh, yes. Excuse me. Uh, okay. So, before we actually begin the session, so I would like to just, uh, you know, um, uh, give a brief introduction about the topic. So, uh, we all uh, are, you know, uh, everyone is talking about AI today, not only the experts, experts in the computer science, experts in the library science, even the laymen, the common people are talking about the AI, artificial intelligence, okay, such is the impact of this tool on, you know, human society. So today you take, for example, any field so that is affected by AI. Okay, so it has been, you know, being extensively used in all the fields. Academic and research, you know, fields are no exception to this. Okay. <clears throat> so this will be my agenda, today's agenda. Okay, so uh, we will talk about uh, AI tools in brief. And, you know, so there are many uh, AI tools, AI, you know, uh, uh, tools like plagiarism detection tools like Turnitin and Copili. And there are language enhancement tools, Grammarly, ChartGPT, Google Bard, Writeful. And there are some AI, you know, uh, uh, assisted research assistance tools like Quillbot, Consensus, Research Rabbit, Lazy Scholar. And if time permits, we will also highlight, you know, also discuss about uh, some alternative search engines called DuckDuckGo and uh, Wolfram Alpha. So before we actually begin, so try to understand, you know, let us try to understand the definition of artificial intelligence. So what exactly this artificial intelligence means? Artificial intelligence is a technology that enables machines to perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. So AI is nothing but a program, computer program. So when it is, you know, uh, used with computers, devices, so it will, you know, uh, make, uh, it will, you know, so make the computer, it will give the computer the capability to perform the tasks you know that actually require the human intelligence okay so once ai technology ai programming is there in this computer okay then so the we can get the work done by the computer which actually require the human intelligence to perform such tasks so if you remember so when the computers were newly introduced okay uh, so many uh, uh, you know many 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 people especially in the banking sector they lost their jobs because so those were the people who were reluctant reluctant to you know learn the computer technology okay that is why they you know lost their jobs but who learned the computer technology they're still doing you know a great job in their you know particular uh, sector and similarly so when this uh, internet was newly introduced in 90s okay in the late 90s so many people thought that you know this internet will make libraries obsolete okay so the libraries will become obsolete you know because of this internet technology but uh, libraries have embraced you know this technology and they have just you know started new uh, new services new ways of providing services and because of that you know libraries still are relevant okay so they have not lost their you know importance in the society similarly any new technology that is introduced so will have both advantages and disadvantages to it right so it depends it totally depends on our perception how we perceive the technology if we use the technology for betterment okay so for good things then we obviously we can you know so use we can make use of the technology as our strength okay so but if we hesitate to learn the technology if we hesitate to embrace the technology then obviously the technology will you know kick kick us out okay like the, the technology will make us outdated that is why so we need there is a time so now the, it's a time to learn the new technology that is artificial intelligence today it may be in the you know it, it in the initial stage of development but it has that potential to replace human beings okay that is why so everybody Okay, every one of us should learn this technology and how, you know, advantageously we can, you know, uh, make use of this technology. That is the uh, point of question here. <clears throat> so as far as uh, uh, research and academia is concerned, so uh, AI can be used, uh, you know, for many, many reasons, many things. Okay, so it can be basically used for literature review. It can be used for data analysis. It can be used for writing assistant. It can be used for text mining purposes. Okay. So if uh, uh, we start using AI in uh, you know, uh, research, basically we can make use of this technology for li literature review. How we can make use of this technology for literature review? <clears throat> if we start you know, doing our, all our literature review work manually, it will take much of our time. So we have to visit the libraries, we have to visit the information centers, we have to refer the books, 
we have to you know access the electronic journals databases and collect the literature and then we have to go through all these things but with the adoption of ai so we can you know do all these work so within you know short short span of time so within a short period of time so we can complete this literature review and that is also with you know efficiency and clarity and data analysis so if the ai technology can be used for data analysis the huge data sets can be analyzed systematically without no time within no time then so the insights new insights can be obtained by applying ai in the uh, to the data sets that we that we have and ai as you you may be using ai like you know chat gpt or google bard or any ai technology as a writing assistant okay so the ai can be used basically for the work of librarians for the work of teachers okay so a lot of clerical works you know we have to do it every day okay so if we employ ai technology in our day to day work so we can you know save the time and say the same time can be you know used for you know doing some other work other productive work okay and for text mining purpose also ai can be used okay ai can effectively be used for text mining purpose and so when the ai is applied to the you know huge data sets new insights can be obtained okay so by using those uh, new insights we can perform our task efficiently so e this is how we can uh, use the ai in research and what are the benefits as i told you so uh, the application of ai or the use of ai will save our time okay obviously so when we you know assign the work or when we you know utilize the ai technology to do our work so we significantly reduce our you know working time then the same time can be used for other productive work so basically the the use of ai will save our time and uh, the ai will help us develop new methods of doing things okay so in library for example or in the uh, universities and academic uh, institutions so we have adopted certain you know methodology or methods to doing things like you know so uh, in 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 library there are many things you know that that we perform classification cataloging you know day to day you know communication work with the users our different stakeholders we do and so there is a you know a systematic method that we have been using okay but when ai is used when ai when we start using ai so we can have more uh, you know clarity about the methods that we are doing okay so we can employ new methods of doing things same things can be done in a different way okay so those ideas those insights can be obtained you know from interacting with the ai technology and it obviously improves quality okay so we the human beings have their own limitations okay right so when we employ ai when we start using ai so we can see the improvement in the quality of work that we perform okay obviously so we must have noticed you know in drafting letters okay in you know compiling the statistics like that so whatever work that you do if we employ the ai if you use the ai then automatically your quality of work will be improved that we will see in our practical demonstration with Uh, as i would like to make it clear that this session is going to be both you know theoretical as well as practical okay so these are the tools that we will be focusing on turnitin quillbot research rabbit writeful chat gpt consensus grammarly google bard copy leaks okay so these are the important to ai tools that we will be talking about today today and so we will have uh, the practical demonstration also okay so in between if you face any difficulties in understanding any concept so you can stop me at any time and ask the questions <clears throat> so first we will start with the tool turnitin so most of most of you or you know so all of you may be aware of turnitin turnitin is a plagiarism detection tool that is widely used in academia so it can be used to check plagiarism in student papers research papers and other types of documents so a uh, majority of the institutions in india may be using this turnitin or other tool but we will be talking now about turnitin what are the features of turnitin and all okay so these are the features of turnitin plagiarism detection okay so it can be used for plagiarism detection originality check okay then data security and ai content detection so now uh, since april 2023 this turnitin has the feature of ai content detection okay if the you know submission is made to the turnitin so it will not only detect the plagiarism or it will not only check the originality along with that so it will also tell us whether the student or the research scholar has taken the help of any ai tool like chat gpt or google bard in writing his assignment or developing his thesis okay that can also be detected with the help of turnitin okay 
so it it can also be used for peer review purpose okay turnitin you know has the different features like you know so it can be used as a platform for peer review okay grammar check facilities also available in turnitin and it can be integrated with lms okay learning management system okay so if your library or if your institution is already you know uh, utilizing the um, you know using the any learning man management system like moodle or any other uh, learning management system so the turnitin can be integrated with that platform okay and uh, in that case so there is no need for you to provide any uh, uh, separate login id and password to the students for accessing turnitin so it can be integrated with the lms and you know so when the student logs into the lms platform in the same platform he will he can you make use of the turnitin software also submissions submissions to the turnitin can be done on that platform itself so that integration uh, is possible you know so that is the feature of turnitin and feedback and grading so turnitin has that feedback and grading feature also so if you use the turnitin as a instructor account so you will have this feature uh, you know in turnitin account so by using this feature so you can you know directly provide feedback to the student assignments also suppose student you know submits his assignments so you can directly check as a teacher that assignment you can go through that assignment if you want to provide any feedback or grading that can be done there itself and there is no need for the teacher to write a separate email or you know communicate uh, you know in any other uh, you know method to the students turnitin has you know this feature uh, integrated on the, that platform itself okay <clears throat> so uh, before we directly go for the demonstration of uh, turnitin so uh, I'll, i'll just you know uh, make you understand you know try to make you understand the color coding you know that is used in the reports generated by the turnitin so you must have seen the turnitin report like you know so it will look like this okay so when the uh, you know similarity index report is generated with the help of turnitin okay so different color codings are used to you know uh, 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 in generate report and those different paragraphs are highlighted in different colors okay like this green blue okay red like this and what is the meaning of these colors okay <clears throat> so if a particular text is highlighted with blue color so uh, it means that there is no matching text okay so that is free of plagiarism and there is no matching text found for that particular highlighted text okay if it is highlighted in blue so if the text particular text a paragraph is highlighted in green color so it is the meaning that you know so there is 1 to 24% of matching text available uh, on the internet okay then so the student has to revise uh, that particular paragraph you know so by way of paraphrasing or by other means okay so if the text is highlighted in you know with the color yellow that means it 25 to 45 49% of the matching text is there with you know that against against that particular paragraph and if it is highlighted in orange it means 50 to 74% of the matching text you know is found for that particular highlighted paragraph if it is in red then 75% to 100% matching text okay so the student you know by just seeing this code without even seeing the percentage so the student can interpret the similarity index report okay effectively okay so now i'll take you to the demonstration page uh, just i'll uh, minimize this and just i'll open my browser okay so uh, turnitin has its dedicated web website okay so just i'm uh, taking you there just type turnitin in the uh, search engine so you will land on this page here is a login button so you can see my cursor here just click on the login button and uh, so uh, so we uh, every one of us you know so who are using the turnitin is given with uh, the uh, uh, you know login id and password so i have the login id and password so i can directly provide that you know login id and password and login okay <clears throat> so the moment i you know enter this software okay this platform so i'll you know uh, see this page and uh, there are two types of accounts here like student account and instructor account so since i am the instructor okay then Uh, i'll select the instructor account so once i select that instructor account so i'll land on this page okay here a uh, quick submit button is also provided for quick submissions i just have to click on this quick submit and just i'll i'm just explaining you how uh, how the process is done okay so how exactly the you know uh, papers or the assignments are submitted to turnitin for plagiarism detection or ai detection <clears throat> so here is a, once you sub, click on this quick submit and submit button so this page will appear before you so you can see my cursor there is a submit button here 
you just have to click on the submit button again for new submissions so the moment you click on the submit button so this page will appear before you and there are three databases in this turnitin okay search the internet uh, search student papers and search periodicals and journals okay so these are the instructions that you give to the software if you just you know uh, no, just tick this search the internet the this the software will search only the internet and it will avoid searching student papers and periodicals that is why by default you have to you know so they are you know blank you have to you know just uh, mark these three uh, you know function functionalities okay then uh, there is one more thing okay so the moment you submit your paper by default it will go to a standard paper repository okay so once it is submitted to the standard repository then uh, so it will be there it will remain there itself and then second time so when you revise your paper and submit it second time so the you know second time so there will be a matching between uh, your fresh paper and the paper that you have already submitted which is already stored in the standard repository so that is why so while you know so uh, preparing any assignment or any paper so if you have not completed that paper if you are still in the process of improvement and you just want to check the similarity then so the best option is uh, not to submit it to the repository there is an option so you have to click on this uh, you know down arrow mark here and select no repository okay the moment you select no repository so the report will be generated for you but your paper will not be submitted to the standard repository so you can always improvise that paper okay assignment and you can come up with the improvised version for you know rechecking okay so that is possible so i have selected no repository and then submit button i have to click on this <clears throat> then i have to provide some basic details like you know uh, name and all okay so here you can see so uh, for uh, turnitin plagiarism detection reports okay so uh, there are many options to generate this okay so multiple files can be uploaded that option is also there so the moment you click here so it will provide you these you know three options like you know so you can choose the file from the computer you can choose file from dropbox and you can also choose the file from google drive okay then uh, cut and paste upload facility is also there so so if you are have just written a one paragraph one single paragraph and you want to check whether that there is any matching or any you know problem with uh, with that particular paragraph then so the cut and paste option is also there so you have to select this cut and paste option okay then just have to type your name so that you can easily identify your paper okay this time giving uh, you know the file name okay then so i have to uh, paste that paragraph that i have written here so you can directly write your paragraph here otherwise if you have already you know written something so that can be copied and pasted here okay so what i'll do i'll just go to uh, you know internet i'll try to copy something you know uh, like uh, any text huh? just for demonstration purpose i'll go to wikipedia okay i'll copy this text okay then i'll come back to turn it in then i'll paste this text here okay then there is upload button you can see my cursor here click on the upload button so it is processing now <clears throat> so it will take uh, you know uh, one or two minutes okay so now everything is done but we have to confirm it okay so i'm just clicking on the confirm button okay now so it is done congratulations your submission is complete this is your digital receipt you can print a copy of this receipt from within the document viewer so if you want to see this report now then you have to go to the assignment inbox so just click on this blue button here okay so uh, this is the assignment inbox so here you can see uh, vishwabharati demo this uh, this is the file name that uh, we gave to the document just click on this okay the uh, report is will be before you okay so this is the uh, one second so we will see the text only report see so this paragraph because i have not written this paragraph on my own 
what i did was i just copied some text from the internet and pasted it here okay if the students you know do the same thing if they copy and paste the things here and that can be easily detected with the help of turnitin so you can see here similarity index is 100% okay so if you want to completely download the report that is possible so you can just click on this and download the report and the same report can be sent to the student for the improvement so if it is directly submitted to the standard repository so even if the student revises you know uh, the uh, assignment second time then so uh, the matching will be there with against his own paper that is why you should not submit your paper or, or the assignment or the thesis directly to the uh, standard repository okay hmm? that you please remember so this is how you can generate the report with turnitin and turnitin is uh, you know ai based technology okay so uh, as i told you so since 2000 uh, april 2023 ai you know so turnitin has come up with the uh, ai detection feature also so for some six months they uh, this turnitin people they provided uh, that feature free of cost to all the universities that were using uh, 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 turnitin software but now uh, of, you know since december 2023 they have stopped it okay stopped it now they are asking uh, you know a premium amount for providing this particular feature ai content detection feature okay that is why so in tiss uh, right now we do not have access to that uh, you know ai content feature that is why i am unable to show you that ai content feature but since we have access to the drill bit software so i can demonstrate the drill bit software and show you how the ai matching reports can be generated okay so just i'll close this i'll come back to this google <clears throat> then i'll just uh, type drill bit so drill bit is a software no i uh, used for plagiarism detection so it is being provided by inflibnet center okay ugc through the inflibnet center to all the universities free of cost free of cost in the sense the inflibnet has already made payment to the you know uh, company drillbit company for to access this software okay so it is equally efficient software so uh, it has uh, more features than you know turnitin i can say because i have tested both the softwares turnitin as well as the drillbit okay so if the uh, assignment is you know prepared uh, with the help of uh, you know uh, ai uh, tools like uh, chat gpt or google bard okay if the same thing can be taken to the turnitin or drillbit so not only the plagiarism detection will be done uh, but uh, along with that the ai detection you know uh, reports can also be generated okay but uh, once you revise that submission like you know assignment with the help of other ai tools like pillbot and other paraphrasing tools so after you know doing the modification if you again take it back to the turnitin so turnitin uh, won't detect that ai okay so even if the uh, you know modification is done with the help of another ai tool called pillbot okay pillbot is a paraphrasing tool okay so if you take for example for the uh, the help of pillbot you know to paraphrase your content okay if uh, once you complete the paraphrasing if you take the same you know file to the turnitin turnitin is not in a position to you know detect that ai content but uh, uh, in the case of a drill bit drill bit will effectively detect that you know uh, ai content that i'll show you uh, just i'll drill bit okay <clears throat> so uh, this is the uh, home page of drillbit okay so here get started button is there so you have to click on this so if you have an account otherwise if you do not have an account so you can approach your university librarian so he will prepare uh, an account for you okay in drillbit okay it is free of cost so i have a login id and password so i am just log uh, getting logged in okay so this is the uh, page how we it looks like exactly okay so i don't uh, uh, want to waste time here you know showing you how to submit the papers and also here the option is there but just i have uh, you know just i would like to show you the demo papers okay like this okay so uh, first i'll show you this okay so here you can see uh, so this uh, particular paragraph uh, was you know uh, uh, taken from the internet without any uh, you know making any modification as it is it was taken okay so now i uploaded this and this here 26% similarity is shown so you can see here my cursor okay and the same document okay one second again 
same document huh? same document i am just opening okay so now the same document i took that text to the plagiarism tool called pillbot okay by using pillbot i made certain changes to the you know paragraph text okay so i have done some changes and again you know uh, uh, you know uploaded this to the drill bit here you can see there is a reduction in similarity okay 6% from 26% to it has come to 6% okay but you can still see the ai ai is 100% because in this case para for paraphrasing purpose i have taken the help of pillbot pillbot is also ai based tool okay i have not done this paraphrasing on my own i have taken the help of pillbot that is why this ai content is shown here but as i told you so if you do the paraphrasing with the help of ai tool and take the same document to the turnitin mm -hmm. turnitin will not detect this ai excuse me there is a disturbance okay <clears throat> okay so so here you can see Josh. please excuse me please yeah, uh, participants please uh, mute your uh, you know uh, so this is how the uh, ai content uh, reports can be generated okay drill bit so i have made the comparison uh, of drill bit as well as the turnitin okay so if you make use of any ai tool for paraphrasing so turnitin won't detect it okay but in the case of drill bit drill bit will detect it okay so, so uh, if there are any doubts or any questions with regard to plagiarism detection participants please excuse me excuse me hello uh, so there is a please mute mute yourself okay so uh, if there are any doubts with regard to this plagiarism detection tool you can ask me otherwise i'll just come back to my presentation okay okay next tool that uh, we are going to discuss is copyleaks copyleaks is also uh, one of the plagiarism detection tools copyleaks is a plagiarism detection tool uh, which is based on ai uh, you know feature okay it helps users to identify and remove plagiarism from their writing so similarly you know uh, it is a, a tool which is similar to the turnitin and drill bit so it uses a variety of algorithms to compare submitted documents to a database of billions of sources including websites books and articles Copyleaks can also detect AI generated content, paraphrased content, and copyright infringement. These are the features of Copyleaks. Uh, complete plagiarism detection is there. You know, AI content detection can be done. Generative AI governance is there in code leaks. So the additional feature uh, the Copyleaks is having is code leaks. Okay. So nowadays, even uh, not only uh, the uh, academicians or the research scholars or the students, even the engineers have started using uh, AI tools like or you know like chat gpt and google bar to write programs okay so if the company asks the engineers to develop some programs so they simply you know are going to the chat gpt and you know taking the help of chat gpt or any other ai tool to generate the codes program codes okay so if anybody does that okay so if uh, any engineer uses the chat gpt or any programming you know uh, any ai tool to generate the programs okay then that can be detected with the help of copy leaks copy leaks has is having that feature with it okay now uh, uh since i am not having access to the copy leaks because i do not have a, you know licensed uh, you know a version of copy leaks in tiss so i am unable to show you but in the demo version is
Yeah, Anand sir, most likely your unstable network, because of unstable network, uh, it's feeding now. I think there is there is technical problem with the speaker. So participants are requested to please hold hold the patience. The speaker will be resuming very soon.
Hello. Yeah, please, sir. Sir, actually, I am facing some, you know, internet issues uh, at my workplace. Okay, so uh, people are fixing it, but till the time now, so I am just using, trying to use my mobile. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, one second, sir. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Whether my screen is visible, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Now, sorry for this interruption. Okay. Uh, so I was just uh, talking about the copy leaks. Copy leaks is a plagiarism detection tool. So since we do not have uh, the license version in TISS, so uh, if you you know, so you can create a uh, you know free account like you know demo account in this particular uh, you know uh, copy leaks. So you can try, you can check the you know efficiency of the software. Okay. So just I'll skip this uh, particular software. Okay. So these are the features as I mentioned. So copy leaks is having an additional feature called code leaks. Okay. So this will help uh, the you know organizations to detect whether there are uh, any issues with uh, the you know particular programming or codes. Okay. So the next is Grammarly. Because Grammarly is a cloud-based, uh, you know, grammar checked, uh, checking, you know, checker and plagiarism detection software. So that helps users improve the, you know, the quality of their writing. So you must be using Grammarly, and you know, to certain extent, so you can make use of this particular software free of cost. But if you want to make uh, use of all the features that are available in Grammarly, then you have will have to have the account created in this because it is a paid software. Because some of the libraries are having access to it, okay. So around five lakhs to eight lakhs, you know, charges are being uh, you know uh, made for this uh, in order in order to access this particular software. In TSS, we are having a licensed version. Okay, then that is why so we have created uh, accounts for uh, people to you know uh, students and teachers, scholars, even the faculty members to make use of this tool effectively. Okay, so it uses artificial intelligence to identify and correct grammar errors, okay, spelling mistakes and punctuation errors because we the human beings. So while typing and while you know so creating the files, so we often make mistakes. Particularly the you know academic style of writing is totally different from the you know, common writing, like, you know, so in generally, whatever we write now, so that is different. So when it comes to academia, so when you try to write paper, you know, uh, uh, research papers, then if you want to submit the same for publication, then the each of the journals, they expect you to, you know, adopt academic writing style. Okay, so academic writing style is totally different from the normal writing style. Okay, that is why so we need to use the tools uh, called Grammarly to enhance our writing skills. Like, you know, so if there are any punctuation marks, mistakes with regard to punctuation marks or, you know, phrases or grammatically voices, active voice, passive voice, if there are any concerns, you can, you know, fix those concerns. We fix those issues by using this tool. So Grammarly also provides feedback on writing style, clarity and conciseness. So, okay, the moment you upload your file to the Grammarly, so Grammarly will provide the feedback to you. Okay, like, you know, so how the writing style is. So whether you are, you know, paragraphs that you have written are clear. Okay, so clearly, they're clearly communicating ideas. So if there are any issues, so all those things will be highlighted on the right hand side. Okay, so uh, just you have to accept those uh, suggestions. Okay, so once you click on the access button, automatically Grammarly will correct your file. Okay, so the suggested things are incorporated in your original file. Everything will be made good. Okay, so that is the beauty of Grammarly. So these are the features of Grammarly. So grammar checking can be done. Spelling and punctuation checking can be done. Writing style feedback can be obtained and plagiarism checking also can be done. Grammarly is having the feature of plagiarism checking also like you know uh, so once you you have made corrections with regard to your grammar and everything so you can there itself you can go for uh, similarity checking also so you can ask the grammarly to check whether there are any plagiarism issues associated with your document okay so those can be addressed there itself okay so but that 
you know the grammar is not having that full fledged uh, uh, you know technology to check the plagiarism so that is why uh, the the reports generated by uh, grammarly with regard to plagiarism are not that full fruit like you know uh, so you have to depend on other uh, you know dedicated tools like turnitin or drillbit for that purpose okay just for checking purpose like if you want to make sure so if there are no concerns for that purpose you check it but you know so before you make any submission to any publisher for publication or you know so university for the award of any degree then so uh, you need to check your you know generate your plagiarism reports or similarity index report with the help of paternity or drill bit or any authorized uh, software that is approved by the ucc so a uh, grammarly demo just i'm checking whether uh, i have uh, the access internet access okay now i'm back okay one second so i'm just logging you know trying to log in from my uh, computer so just please uh, two minutes Please provide it to me. From one more account, I'm just you know trying to log in. Uh, here I'll stop sharing my screen. I'll come back because uh, I'm not feeling comfortable using this mobile phone. I'll just leave the uh, you know meeting and. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Sir, I'm yes, extreme. Sir. I'm extremely sorry for the you know interruption that. No, 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 no,
so okay now i am uh, 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 no logged into this uh, particular you know a uh, tool grammarly okay so the moment you log into the software so this is the home page so whatever files that you upload or check so they, they will be displayed like the, here like this okay so if there is a new file so if you want to upload so here is an option to upload new file so you can see my cursor click on the upload button the moment you click on the upload button so uh, so this page will open before you so here in this space so you can directly start typing your document okay so if you have time so you can directly type your account you know whatever text that you want to you know type otherwise simultaneously you have uh, where you have an option to upload the file also just you have to click on these three bars here so you can see my cursor click then now upload file okay so just you have to click on the upload file then it you have to specify from where it has to fetch that file okay so if it is already saved on some desktop or some other place so you can directly upload from there you know by mentioning this you know uh, selecting the file okay otherwise so what you can do is if you have a file already opened before you so you can just copy and paste that content here so that you know this space in this space this is a you know entire space that is given to you for writing okay what i'll do is i'll just uh, minimize this okay so i have a, a demo file with me uh, one second okay so here i have some text okay so what i'll do is so i'll just uh, copy this uh, particular uh, paragraph and uh, try to you know come back to my this grammarly tool and i'll paste it here okay so the moment i copy paste something like you know so whatever i have written or as whether it is assignment or thesis the moment i paste something or the moment i upload any file so this will be uh, the information i can see okay the moment you paste something so this uh, you know screen will appear before you so you have to tell uh, you know you have to inform uh, the you know particular this grammarly tool that you know so in what domain you are working like you know so whatever paragraph i have written now so i have to mention so in which domain i'm actually working whether i'm in academia or whether i have developed this content as a general content or whether i'm working in a business and i have written this you know particular paragraph uh, you know uh, in the uh, business field so you have to mention so whether it is an email that i have developed okay so you have to clearly mention tell the grammarly in which domain you are working okay okay so that will uh, make grammarly understand your objective okay then what is the intent of writing this particular paragraph that you have to mention whether you have written this particular you know a paragraph just to inform somebody or if whether you have written this particular paragraph to describe something some story or uh, convince so if you are planning to convince somebody through your email and all so that uh, intent you have to just mention here okay then i have selected the academia then type of the content whether it is essay or report or other thing okay then you can ignore this then done okay the moment you you know uh, uh, mention uh, the intent and everything so the grammarly now will give its feedback to you like you know so if there are any mistakes everything you know all the errors mistakes are highlighted in red color like you know red underlining like this okay so here in this paragraph i have used the people the people so grammarly says that uh, you should remove this uh, article the can you see this here uh, it has you know clearly mentioned only people i have to use Yes, if i am okay with the suggestion then i have to just click on this accept button if i am not agreeing with the suggestion that the grammarly is making to me then i can go with dismiss okay dismiss the suggestion okay then here in this case i am just accepting this i have just clicked accept so the moment i click clicked on this accept button so the it has been removed everything is made clear here people okay like this so uh, there is one more suggestion in reading so just i have to accept this like this now so i have to accept everything whatever suggestions this grammarly is giving me so i have to accept those things then automatically my you know uh, paper is getting revised here okay like this once i made uh, all these changes okay then so you can see here so correctness there are three alerts you just click on this these are the alerts like you know uh, update all you just click on this correctness button so there are three suggestions made with regard to the correctness of your document okay then 
just update all button you have to click the moment you clicked so everything is you know made correct then clarity there are two, two alerts okay like just when you click on the correctness again one uh, one more uh, error is there that you have to change okay now like this na clarity so all these features you can just uh, make the corrections you you will have to just uh, accept the suggestions that is uh, being made to you by grammarly okay so once everything is done so 95% overall score so almost all your uh, you know uh, things are corrected here okay okay so once is done uh, so you can just again you know copy this and take it to your original text okay so once everything is done so you can go for plagiarism detection also here you can see my cursor plagiarism detection feature is also available you just click on this the moment you click on this it will uh, search for any plagiarism concerns that your document is having okay so uh, it looks like 100% original but uh, don't believe on this grammarly's suggestion like particularly this plagiarism okay so you have to again go to some uh, you know exclusive softwares that are available for plagiarism checking like drillbit or uh, turnitin okay but uh, as far as the grammar uh, you know errors are concerned like uh, so if you want to improve the style of writing okay then so grammarly is the best tool for you okay so i'll just come back to my uh, presentation quickly because there are many tools that i want to cover but i don't know uh, whether i'll be having time so chat gpt the, the next tool that we are going to discuss is chat gpt chat gpt is a large language model as you know uh, it's developed by open ai that is specifically designed for chat applications so it can generate text translate languages write different kinds of creative content and answer your questions in an informative way you must have used chat gpt already i don't need to explain you know about this tool chat gpt is still under development please remember and but it has the potential to be a powerful tool for chatbots and other conversational ai applications okay so these are the you know features of chat gpt it is generative like you know so uh, whatever uh, uh, content you want to generate with the help of chat gpt you just have to mention your uh, you know um, uh, questions a question that you know so in response to that question so it will generate the content for you it is a kind of conversational interaction that you are having with uh, chat gpt like so if you ask something okay so uh, uh, chat gpt will give answer to your question and uh, so when you you can ask the secondary question like you know so the question that is linked to your first question so so you need not repeat in that case na so if you want to continue with that conversation particular con conversation then you need not mention your basic purpose or basic question again and again to chat gpt so once you put the question and so you can you know uh, ask uh, additional questions related to the primary question that you have asked okay so the chat gpt will not ask you to repeat the primary question it is a kind of conversation so as if you are having a discussion with an expert okay and it can be used as a virtual assistant okay so now after the introduction of chat gpt a uh, majority of the clerical works uh, can be done with the help of chat gpt and it can act as a virtual assistant for you and it is adaptive as i told you so once you you know mention your uh, question so automatically even if you make any mistakes in asking questions so it will understand the situation okay it will guess the situation and provide the answers accordingly okay so it is very adaptive so let us have a you know demo of chat gpt uh, so now uh, we are on the home page of chat gpt so here uh, you can use you know chat gpt for any of your work okay so especially so uh, i assume that the the participants are uh, you know most of you are librarians and in the library you know most of the clerical works that uh, we have been doing okay so with the help of chat gpt or with the help of uh, this particular tool or any other ai tool so we can reduce that uh, clerical job like you know so we can save our time and you know dedicate that time to do some other activity like you know chat gpt can be you know used for anything okay so if you want to classify the books okay classification cataloging for all those purposes also so you can make use of chat gpt like you know so if you have a document called indian history so if you have just purchased a book called indian history okay so you want to classify this book okay so the, what you can do is you can just ask chat gpt like you know uh, classify 
the uh, title Indian history. <clears throat> One second. Uh, so I have made mistake in this. Okay. Uh, classify the book titled Indian history as per DDC. Okay, so the moment you you know ask your question, so uh, the work will be done for you. Like you know, uh, so it has already classified nine five four, you know, one zero one. So this is the classification number that you got you know by using chat. You need not go and check the schedules DDC. Okay, so if you want to you know um, uh, catalog any book, okay, so you just have to provide some basic information like you know, I want to. Otherwise, you can just put your question. Just you know, uh, catalog the following book. Okay, uh, title. I mentioned. Kari title. You just have to mention Indian history. Okay, in author name. Just uh, for example, okay. place of. Publication, Mumbai, publisher, this, okay, then pages, 20 pages, like this, some, some basic information you provide uh, to, you know, this, and uh, catalog it as per AACR2, okay. So the moment you give uh, the the chat GPT will catalog the document like this, okay. And uh, so if you want to create citation for this particular thing, uh, so that is also possible. Like you know, so whatever question you want to ask, you can ask chat GPT, okay. Otherwise, if you are you know uh, planning to you know renew your subscription, okay, so you can ask chat GPT to write a letter, draft a letter for you to uh, you know the renew your subscription, like you know, uh, just. Tell chat tell chat GPT that what uh, you want uh, you know particular tool to do the work. Okay, I want to renew my subscription. Okay, subscription for the database. Okay, Manupatra, for example. Okay, draft a letter to the publisher with Payment details, so you can ask ChatGPT. So ChatGPT will help you write the letter. Okay, like so you have to just replace your name, your organization's name, and publisher's name. You have to mention, and uh, I hope this finds you well. I am writing to renew subscription, and these are the payment details. Okay, so uh, if you want to do it manually, okay, then so it will obviously take uh, much of your time. Like at least uh, half an hour you will waste on in you know on drafting the letter. But with the help of ChatGPT, so you can directly, you know, uh, reduce that time. Okay, so you can directly ask ChatGPT. You can make changes. Otherwise, if you want to reduce the content of this letter, so you can again ask. Okay, so please keep it short because you want to send a short letter, not this lengthy one. Okay, so you need not remember the entire thing. Okay, so it has already understood your query. Okay, now you can have this revised version. Okay, like this. So, a uh, chat GPT can, you know, can be used to do all, you know, library related work, like whether it is classification, cataloging. Otherwise, if you want to make all the processes in the library, like reference service, everything, you know, smooth going. So, if a particular, you know, employee is handling the reference service, okay, if there is no workflow created for that particular service, if he is on leave, so other person may not be able to provide that service as effectively as the person who was already uh, providing. So that is why so you can you have to create a workflow for all the activities in the library. If you want to do it, so you can do it. Okay. So with the help of ChatGPT, ChatGPT will you know you know generate the you know workflow for all your you know library tasks. Like you know, so I want to uh, otherwise directly I can please uh, prepare. Workflow to provide reference service in 
academic library okay so here is a workflow how uh, the particular service can be done so initial inquiry so when a patron approaches the reference desk the contact the library with a reference question greet them warmly and you know attentively so gather the basic you know information so on which you know a subject he wants to you know have the information like basic details you have to ask then assessment so assessment of the complexity of the reference question then uh, resource identification based on the particular you know query so you have to identify the resource whether that information is available in the library whether it have to search online for that so all those things the, the entire workflow is generated okay so how a reference service can be provided so similarly so you can have workflow for all other activities like classification cataloging you know and then uh, you know anything any 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 query that you uh, you can make the entire library work as easy as possible okay so with the help of chat gpt drafting letters okay then so uh, as you know classification cataloging can be done and even for management purpose so if you want to you know make presentation okay so uh, for example so i want to make presentation on use of ai tools in research okay please help me okay because generally so if you want to prepare the ppts so you have to think okay think 10 times and you have to develop your idea and then you will create your ppt but with the help of chat gpt so you can do all these works within you know a fraction of time like you know so just i have just type this query okay so now everything is ready okay title okay so then what i have to include what is ai ai tools in research okay data analysis all these things can be you know prepared okay so i can discuss all these things okay like this so anything can be possible even if you want to uh, you know undertake the literature review that can also be done so i am conducting a research okay on ai in research okay please review some papers okay literature review can also be done so because if you commit any mistake na so while asking questions so it will take differently otherwise that is why so while framing questions for chat gpt or any google bard or any any other tool so you have to you know think twice okay like so even if you commit mistake it will understand but you know so you have to as per as possible so you have to ask the questions which are very clear in nature okay so like this na so you can ask chat gpt to anything okay so if you have any pdf file or any text files so you can upload the content to the chat gpt and ask chat gpt to summarize the entire content for you like this so i have a paper with me okay so what i'll do is uh, i'll copy this entire thing because i do not have time to read all these things okay i do not have time so what i'll do is i'll copy this till conclusion okay okay then i'll copy this i'll come back to chat gpt oh one second okay then i'll paste it here now what i'll do is uh, i'll ask chat gpt to prepare a summary of it okay prepare a summary for this okay so now i'll have uh, i'll get the summary okay so if you see this is the summary of the text that i have uh, already given submitted to the uh, chat gpt okay so it was a you know a, a paper of some 4 to 5 pages now the chat gpt has reduced this and it has summarized the entire content like this okay so you can you know try to make use of chat gpt so for different uh, purposes okay so if there are any doubt i would be happy to answer otherwise i'll come back to my presentation okay uh, the next tool that we are going to discuss is google bard okay so google bard uh, is also known as gemini gemini okay okay 
So Google Bard is a large language model chatbot developed by Google AI. So it is similar to ChatGPT, but there are some slight differences. It is a conversational AI tool that can be used to brainstorm ideas, spark creativity, and accelerate productivity. The Google uh, Bard's aim is to enhance the reliability and trustworthiness of language models, especially when it comes to producing long form of content such as essays, articles, and documents. For these purposes, you can use uh, you know this Google Bard. And what is the difference between ChatGPT and Google Bard? ChatGPT is trained on a massive data sets of text and code, but this data set, set is static, static in nature, meaning that it has not been updated since 2021, but uh, later they have updated. And now till January 2022, they have updated the ChatGPT database. Okay, so whatever database that, you know, ChatGPT is using to provide answers is a static database. Okay, it is not frequently updated. Okay, so once in a while it is updated. That is why the, the information that you get, you know, from chart GPT is outdated in the sense it is not that updated content. Okay. So if you want chart GPT to help you with some statistics, latest statistics, then in that case, chart GPT is not the right tool for you to consult. So in that case, you have to go for the Google Bard. Google Bard, on the other hand, is trained on a similar data set, but it also has access to the real time internet so whatever you know uh, in uh, that is appearing on in the internet whatever content whatever information that is getting appeared on the internet so the google bard has access to it so even if you ask the uh, question related to something that has happened yesterday so the google bard is in a position to provide answer to that question but in, in the case of chat gpt you won't get that answer but as far as the creative content generation is concerned Okay, the other works are concerned and chat GPT is very beautiful. Too. Okay, so that this is the only difference between these tools. Okay, chat GPT is designed primarily for conversational interactions and a wide range of language tasks. It's well suited for generating human like text. Okay, so if you have already experienced the chat GPT, you must have, uh, you know, understood this feature okay so the the the, the text that is generated by chat gpt is a human like text okay understanding the context and providing diverse and you know coherent responses across various topics it's a, it's a beauty of chat gpt so google bard is a research project on the other hand by open ai that aimed to improve upon gpt models bard was developed to enhance long range coherence and factual accuracy factual accuracy this is very important okay so especially in the context of creating more reliable and trustworthy long form content such as essays and articles so google bard is the best tool for you okay okay just have a you know a demonstration of google bard okay uh, just i'll type google bard now it is known as gemini uh, bard is now gemini just click on this. If you are already having your Google account, then there is no need for you to create any account. Okay. So as I told you, there is a slight difference. I want to. I don't want to repeat everything that I have demonstrated with ChatGPT. Just I'll uh, tell the difference to you. So if I want to know, okay. Uh, what is the population of India? Not population. Current population current population of India. So if I ask this question, so Google Bard will give me the exact answer. Okay, what is the current population of India? Okay, so uh, as of February 18, 2024, till yesterday, the estimated population of India to be around, okay, like this. So you can get, you know, the latest data. But if you go back to this, uh, you know, uh, chart GPT and ask the same question, I'll just show you. Same question we will ask chat GPT. Okay. What is the current population of India? Same question, but see the answer. So as of my last update in January 2022, the population of India was 1.3 billion. Okay. So it the content is not updated here. The information that you get, okay, on statistical uh, related information, it, it is not up to date. Okay, so that is why if you want to have some information, which uh, you know, uh, we, the if it is uh, you know really uh, a statistical related, like you know, so if you want to get the updated information, then Google Bard is great in that way. But if you want to develop some creative content, like uh, you know, abstract generation and, you know, research design, review of literature, such kind of things, letter writing, okay, so then chat GPT can be the best tool, okay.
So I'll come back to my presentation and the next tool that we are going to discuss is right pull. So I believe there are no questions. Okay. Uh, I have time lesser uh, till uh, till five thirty. I can take. No. Please somebody uh, confirm. Please carry on. You have yes, time. sir. Yes, sir. You have okay. time, sir. Okay. Okay, so please, please uh, inform me. So whenever uh, you want me to stop, now please inform me. Okay. Um, so the next tool yes, that we are going to discuss is Writeful. Okay. Writeful is a suite of AI power tools that help researchers and students write, paraphrase, copy, edit, and more. Okay. So it is specifically designed for academic writing, and it offers a variety of features that can help you improve the quality and clarity of your writing. So it's a fantastic tool it can be used for many purposes i'll just demonstrate you that you know so it is available as a web app as well as a plugin for microsoft word so you can you know uh, use it as a you know plugin for microsoft word okay so it is free to use please remember it is free to use for students and researchers with some paid features available for publishers and other organizations also but in my opinion so there is no need for anyone to go for the uh, paid versions because whatever features that are available in the free version those features are sufficient to get our work done okay so these are the features grammar and style checking can be done with the help of right pull plagiarism detection can be done uh, abstract generation and title generation these two features I, I i love this software because of these features okay i'll just show you and before that these are the other features paraphrasing can be done academic uh, pre suggestions can be you know obtained paid version so if you go for paid version there are many other features available and gpt content detection can also be obtained by using this tool just i'll take you uh, for the demonstration uh, just go to your browser and uh, type right pull okay. right pull okay first hit that you get uh, you'll be that only just click on this and you will be landing on this page okay so just uh, browse uh, down just go down scroll down okay so these are the features uh, title generator academizer paraphraser gpt and abstract generator just here is a button you can see my cursor here try them out okay just click on this try them out button okay so the moment you click so you'll be landing on this page here all the features are mentioned okay so now we will start with the title generator right okay so you can click here also otherwise from here also you can go okay so the moment you click so you'll be landing on this page because this is one of the you know beautiful features of uh, you know right pull okay so because you now so we the librarians and you know teachers so we often write uh, papers conduct surveys and write papers okay so once you complete our manuscript then then comes the real challenge like assigning a suitable title to the paper so that becomes a headache for many of us because uh, we, we 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 spend much of our time in you know fixing the title suitable title for the manuscript that we have uh, you know undertaken this study on okay so once your paper is ready from introduction to the conclusion okay otherwise once your abstract is ready even the abstract is ready and based on that abstract so you can generate the title you know get the idea regarding the title like you know so this is my abstract this is a demo paper that I'm having or any abstract. So if you're having a paper, so you can just copy that abstract and, you know, so come back. So I'll just paste this abstract here. Okay. So an abstract is pasted. Now I'll have to click on this generate title. So can you see my cursor here? Click on generate button. The moment I click, so this title I got perception of students with visual impairment about university libraries. If I am, you know, I'm not happy with this title. So what to do? So again, you have to click on this title. So you'll get a different title. The perception of students with visual impairment about university slightly there is a change but if still i'm not happy click again a study on the perception of students with visual impairment about university level i'm still not happy then again click it okay. perception of students with visual impairment about like this now so you can you know have multiple titles okay so if you like any title that is suggested by the right pool then so you can just copy this title and Take it to your manuscript so this is the beautiful feature okay available in right pool the second feature is abstract generator okay even writing abstract is a challenge okay because you know uh, covering or you know capturing everything that is uh, mentioned in a you know five or ten page article in a single paragraph is a challenge okay writing clear cut abstract which can be you know uh, which can convey the real purpose or objectives everything the findings of the study effectively is a real challenge for the authors so in that case so rightfully is there to help them okay 
just what you have to do is you have to copy everything from uh, you know abstract is not there suppose here is, there is no abstract okay so abstract is had to be written so i have uh, developed my paper from introduction till conclusion okay so what to do i don't have time to write uh, abstract because uh, you know so it is very difficult to write uh, abstract and you know so capture everything in a single paragraph i feel that okay so if if you are in that situation just copy from introduction to conclusion you just copy the text okay come back to this paste everything here okay now everything is pasted here now i have to click on the generate abstract button click so it is processing so it will take uh, one or two minutes okay so once it is processed the abstract is ready can you see the abstract the study was carried out to understand the perception of people with visual impairment about the infrastructure services and facility like this so very clear abstracts will get okay so once you copy uh, your content from introduction to conclusion so this rightful can be used for you know generating the uh, abstracts okay then comes the paraphraser okay this is the third feature okay so if you have something like you know so something in one language that can be you know converted or paraphrased uh so if you have uh, so this is the thing that i have okay now i want to paraphrase this okay so what i'll do is i'll come to this paraphrasing tool available feature available in the right tool i have to just paste it here okay this paragraph i want to paraphrase okay now you will have three levels okay like low medium and high level so if you say go with low only minor changes will be made to the original text okay if you go with medium changes at word and phrase level will be made so if you go with high then most changes at paraphrase and synthetic level will be done okay so i'll go with high okay okay now uh, let us see so now you see so this is my you know original paragraph till here okay and this is the paraphrased version okay unlike other tools there is one more beautiful tool uh, available that is called as quillbot but compared to quillbot the beauty of rightful is so in one go it provides three sets of uh, you know uh, uh, paraphrased paragraphs to you like you know this is one set this is one set so this is the second set and this is the third set in one go so you will have the option of three sets like so if you like this paraphrasing just copy it if you don't like it you need not repeat it again okay so you just you know go to the second option so this is the paraphrased version second so this is the third version okay so there are three versions paraphrased versions are available for the same 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 text okay so this is the beauty of this tool okay paraphrasing okay then academizer just check this feature what is this feature is about okay so as i told you academic writing is totally different from uh, you know the uh, normal way of writing or the common way of writing so uh, sometimes we make mistake in uh, analyzing the data or writing papers okay so example uh, i'll tell you so we like this okay the results of this study are pretty good and so other field should also use them so this is our interpretation so while writing interpretation we use such wordings okay but these are not academically rich like you know so these are not uh, you know uh, such wordings are not used in academic writing so what you have to do is so you have to just copy or type such sentences here and click on the academizer okay click on it let us see what will happen okay so now you have three sets the same sentence is repeated okay with academic writing style the results of this study are quite good and should also be used in other fields this is how we can write otherwise the results obtained by this study are very good and the results should be used in other fields as well this study has obtained high quality results and could be applied in other fields as well okay like this you can you know make use of this now, so even if you write a single sentence if it is not uh, academic uh, you know academically rich then you can use this tool and let us see the example 2 so sometimes we write like this now so while analyzing the table this shows that we need to look at what smith already wrote but it has to be done in this fashion this is the case in point okay for further investigation of the works of smith this is how you should write okay okay 
sometimes we write like this like a table one shows a lot of numbers but doesn't really tell us anything so this is the way uh, some students research scholars write while interpreting the tables but it has to be done it has to be written in this fashion table one shows the distribution of range of numbers but doesn't reveal any significant information table one shows some numbers but is not comprehensive like this so uh, this feature can be used okay uh, for you know improving your writing so while developing papers this write pool can be of a great help to you all okay then it has one more option like gpt uh, detector so if you have anything okay so that can be pasted here and you can check whether that content is uh, generated with the help of chat gpt or google bard okay so what i'll do is so because this con particular content is developed by the human being so that is why it is telling that one percent likely this comes from gpt okay this is mostly original but if you generate something from uh, chat gpt and paste it here so you will clearly uh, show that uh, percentage your ai matching will be more like you know, 60 70 percent matching will be there okay so you can uh, use this tool for many purposes so, so without wasting time i'll come back to my presentation the next tool that we are going to discuss is quillbot okay quillbot is a paraphrasing tool that helps users rewrite sentences and paragraphs without changing the meaning okay so it uses artificial intelligence to identify the key concepts in a text to generate new ways to express those concepts quillbot can be used to improve the readability of text to avoid plagiarism and to make text more concise okay so these are the features of quillbot Quillbot is having the same features as of uh, writeful paraphrasing grammarly checking text summarizing and plagiarism checking and uh, the additional features that it is having is citation generation. So most of you may be using, uh, you know, many other um, reference management tools available free of cost. So, but so simultaneously can use Quillbot also for citation generation. I will show you how we can use it. And language translation service can be done, and other some 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 paid uh, features are also available. But I don't think they are, you know. Uh, used they're useful useful in a sense they're not needed actually okay as uh, you by by using the you know free uh, features which are available already in this free version so the students and research can can do their work okay there is no need for them to go for the uh, licensed version or the subscribed version okay so let us see the demo of this billboard so very 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 you know, important uh, ai tool billboard <clears throat> Okay, so this is the home page or landing page of the Quillbot. Here are the features: paraphrasing, grammarly checker, plagiarism checker, Quillbot flow, summarizer, citation generator, and translator. So we'll first start with uh, paraphrasing. Okay, so click on the paraphrasing. This box will appear before you. But unlike uh, the right full, so it has a limitation with regard to word count. Okay, so. Just I'm you know pasting here one paragraph, but it is telling that there is a word word limit like uh, you know. Um, hmm? So if you want to fully utilize all the features, then I have to go for the you know licensed version or the upgraded premium version. But I don't require. So in that case, I, what I can do is I have to you know paragraph by paragraph, so I can do my work. You know, so one paragraph I pasted here, then I'll just click on the paraphrase button. The moment I click. So the paraphrased content will appear before you. So unlike other paraphrasing tool, Writeful we have already used. The beauty of Writeful is totally different. You know, the 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 Writeful provides you three sets of uh, options, okay, or for a single text that you want to paraphrase. But on the other hand, Quillbot will provide you this text, and along with that, it will provide you the freedom to change the text. Like you know, so all these texts can be changed. Like so the moment you take your cursor on any word okay so then when you click on this particular word okay so it will provide you the list of alternatives like synonyms okay so there is no need for you to, to copy this and take it to your uh, word file and then there you have to edit it okay so here itself you can edit your paraphrasing to your paraphrasing like if you want to change any words you can do it so instead of however i if i want to use nevertheless or still fortunately so i can use the alternatives like you no know? so here the user will have an opportunity to you know change the words according to the situation because it is a machine generated thing but if you want to look make the paragraph look like a human generated thing then so you can you know you have an option to change that okay so once everything is done you have just have to copy it you can see my cursor click on this button Otherwise, you can download this particular thing. Okay, so this is how paraphraser works here. Okay, then grammar checker. 
so let us check so similar if you do not have access to the tool uh, like you know grammarly grammarly is a paid version as i told you but certain to certain extent you can use it but you know so all not uh, not all the features are available uh, for the free user okay so that is why so you can make use of the quillbot also quillbot has the you know capability to suggest all punctuation and grammar errors grammar errors to you if you have already you know you know written something so if it is available in word file so you can upload that file here by clicking upload document otherwise if you have some written something just you just paste it here okay then grammar checking will be done like you know so here everything is highlighted as i told you so this is so they can people it is changed now impairment okay so when i you have used people so it has to be impairments it is telling so just i have to click on this if i want to you know ignore the suggestion that can be done by clicking ignore otherwise just click on this it gets changed then next 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 like this now so you have to just accept the suggestions okay and you will also have an option to ignore also okay just okay so now everything is fixed okay so this paragraph is grammatically you know rich like you know so there are no errors in this okay so this is how you can make use of the uh, you know grammar errors okay uh, fixed okay now comes summarizer as i told you so if we have uh, some full text okay like uh, so you have to copy everything from uh, uh, introduction from introduction to if you do not have time okay so to you know understand or read go through the paper just copy from introduction to conclusion okay then come back to this tool paste it here okay so now summarize because there is a word limit huh? so you just have to be aware of this so because it doesn't allow you to you know uh, summarize everything because okay now there is a word limit so uh summary has appeared here like okay so this is the text and summary is here available like this so you can use make use of this tool for summarization also like now we will uh, you know see this uh, translator so if i have something you know in one language uh that can be you know translated to other language some google translator is also uh, already available that is very good but now so if you still you can so if you want to use this quill board for that purpose you can use it okay just copy the text or you can directly type that in this box available okay now translate so the moment you copy paste something the automatically the 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 text will be detected like you know so it, if it is in english uh, there is a detection like so it is already det detected like it is english text okay so now from english to which language you want to translate you have to select see my cursor yeah you can if you want to you know translate this into hindi okay okay just select hindi from this list okay so now this text is translated to hindi okay so if it is in hindi suppose so we have a text in hindi sorry what i'll do is i'll copy this and i'll paste it here the moment i paste it okay so the hindi is detected here text automatically now from hindi i want to you know translate it to some bengali okay select bengali you can see here so immediately so you can translate from one language to the other language okay so this is how you can make use of uh, quillbot if there are no questions i'll just move to the other important tool that is consensus okay consensus sir i can have uh, uh, another 10 minutes of your time uh, please because i want to cover some uh, some uh, you know two three important you can tools. continue sir okay 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 thank you so consensus is the next tool that uh, so uh, we want to discuss consensus is basically a search engine please remember okay it, it uses the language models to surface papers and synthesize insights from academic research papers it's a beautiful tool so it's not a chatbot please remember it's not a chatbot like chat gpt or google bard it's basically a search engine but it uses the same technology throughout the product to help make the research papers research process more efficient 
okay the current source of material used to used in consensus comes from the semantic scholar you may be aware about this semantic scholar database which includes over 200 million papers across all domains of science so the meaning of this is so it is using some authentic database to generate the content for you okay to produce the content that i'll show you. see so these are the features so the, the the results that are produced are given by the church consensus are evidence based results not the general one like you know, so if you go to any search engine like google or anything so whatever you search you will get millions of uh, pages of information but those millions of pages of information are not authentic okay but when you, when you go as a researcher to this consensus tool the, the the results that you get are evidence based results all those results are based on scientific research papers okay then you will also have a consensus meter for your search okay that i'll show you what is that consensus meter okay then scientifically verified results okay so because the information that is provided so is fetched from scientific papers that that is why so scientifically verified results you will get okay so you need not worry about the authenticity of the results that consensus is providing to you then quick analysis of the results will also be done so so if once you ask questions so consensus will you know go through all the research papers available on the topic and you know fetch all the information and give you know produce before you these are the articles that so you can refer for your research work and not only that so it will go through all the content and you know provide you a gist of the all the papers like summary of all the papers so how many of the papers are there and you know so how actually main focus of those papers is on something like that so you will get a clear picture of uh, you know for your research research query okay let us uh, have a demo of this particular tool just go to you know uh, search engine and type consensus okay <clears throat> so this is the tool okay so like, you know, so uh, before you start to uh, undertake uh, any research work, so you have to, you know, um, go for literature review. And even before that literature review, so if you want to ascertain, so whether the topic or the area that you have chosen for your research is correct or not. Okay. So whether any articles are, you know, published in that particular area and if they are published and what are those articles and what is the opinion? Okay. What are the opinion, different opinions of the authors who have already published in that particular area? If you want to know all these things, then consensus is the best tool to start your research okay so like you know so you have to frame your question in this fashion huh? like you know so uh, there is one example kind can mindfulness improve sleep so this is your research of you know question like the hypothesis okay can mindfulness improve sleep this is your research question similarly you have to frame your research question okay the moment you you know put your research question to this consensus so consensus will search all the papers okay like you know so there are uh, some you know 19 uh, 16 papers 16 papers are analyzed for this particular query okay and the summary of that those papers is given here okay so these studies suggest that mindfulness interventions including various you know, mindfulness based therapies generally improve sleep quality okay and among these 16 papers how many of the authors are of the opinion that yes can mindfulness mind, mindfulness really improve the sleep quality like 81 percent of the papers are you know, uh, supporting your view, okay, like your question. And uh, there are some 19% of the papers that say that, so can my mindfulness may improve the sleep quality or may not, because these authors, these 19% of the authors are not sure about, you know, uh, the, the question that you are asking. Like, so on the basis of this, so you can make a mind, like you can make a mind, mind like otherwise you can decide. So whether to proceed further with this particular uh, research question or you have to, you know, modify something. So this can be the you know better start or the best start for your research. Okay, so you can just see, and if you want to click read this paper further, just you have to click on this particular thing. Okay, so again you will get the uh, details, abstract and methodology results, everything you will get. Okay, so you can try this tool, uh, especially before you start your research. This can be the best tool for you. Okay. Then I'll come to the next uh, uh, important tool that is Research Rabbit. Okay, Research Rabbit is a free open source literature mapping tool that helps researchers discover relevant academic literature. Okay, so uh, before you undertake your literature review work, okay, even for literature review, what you do normally, what we do, so we go to the library and you know, and access you know 
thousands of papers in a you know by using different keywords okay then so we have to download all those papers and you know so after downloading we have to create different folders for those papers downloaded papers and again one by one we have to read them to understand the concept clearly but this research rabbit tool is there to help the researchers to make their literature review work easy okay so you need not go to the library for literature review okay so if you really want some papers if they are not available in research rabbit okay then for such papers you go to the library okay such books you go to the library and download them for further reading okay so what actually happens i'll tell you so if i am conducting a research in a particular area for example so use of ai in Uh, research or academia so what i'll do so i'll download some paper okay so suppose i have downloaded one paper okay then i'll go through their paper so if i want to refer the papers okay the papers which are cited by that particular paper like if i have downloaded one paper and that particular paper has cited some other authors also na okay some some 15 papers are cited by that particular paper if i want to go to those read those 15 papers but again i have to go to the library and you know search for those papers but with the help of research rabbit everything can be done in a single phase like you know so in one go everything can be done i'll show you okay so these are the features before we ex ex actually go for the demonstration these are the features we need to understand so this particular tool can be used for citation analysis literature mapping collaboration tool and paper recommendation okay so uh, this is how it looks and i'll take you for this demonstration uh, research rabbit this is going to be our last uh, tool okay don't worry i'll just conclude my session research rabbit okay just type research rabbit and the first hit that you are getting is this only and you have to create uh, an account in this particular you know website okay so it will not take uh, more than 5 minutes of you okay just you have to you know One second, I give me a minute. at the moment you log into this uh, so this particular page will appear before you page in the sense this is the landing page okay how it looks like okay then uh, so there is an option to create you can see my cursor here so you can create new collection like you know so just click on this and it will provide you uh, an option to create new collection like you know so uh, if you have just started your research and you have to create a folder for this okay so that you can keep everything that you search in that particular folder like uh, just i'll type विश्व भारती ओके चन ओके so now this particular vishva bharati folder is created okay so again i have to click on this folder now the moment i click on this folder it will ask me to add some paper like you know so if we have already identified one good paper in the, in the field of uh, you know a study that you are you know uh, trying to do the literature review just you have to you know upload that paper here otherwise if it the, that paper is available on the internet already just you have to mention that just click this plus button here add paper then this dialog box will appear before you just if you have the title provide the title if you have doi provide the doi otherwise just search, search with the keyword like uh, uh, ai applications in research like i do not have any particular paper now uh, i want to add a paper by searching here so just keyword also i can type just click a search button the moment you click on the search button these you know you have to mention whether you want uh, this particular tool to check only biomedical and life sciences related journals or all subjects so you better go with all subjects okay the moment you mention so all these papers are displayed before you okay according to your keyword ai applications in research okay like uh, so you have to identify one good paper that you really like implementation of artificial intelligence application in radiology otherwise you just see ai talent in ai talent acquisition ai based modeling techniques and applications so if you select this just you have to you know click on this green button you know so which is mentioned against this article just 
I'm just going to click this. Okay, so now this paper is added. So you can just close this dialog box. Okay, so now this paper is added. This paper has come here. Okay, now if you want to read this, just click on this. So the abstract will appear before you. You can see the abstract is available here and the full text is also available. If the full text is available, that is mentioned in green colors. Can you see this green color? So if you click on this, the automatically the PDF file will open before you like this. So you can read the PDF file there itself. Just I'm closing it. I'm coming back. So suppose manually, if you download this article, you will read this article and there are, you know, some 74 references to this article. Okay. 74 references. But if you want to read those 74 papers, so it will take more time for you. So if you do it manually, you have to again, search the database, again, find the article again, download it. But here, in this case, research rabbit, if you're using, so just click on these references, 74 references. So all those 74 references are displayed before you. Can you see here? Okay. And how many of them are full text? Everything is mentioned here. So if they are highlighted in green color, then so they are full text. If it is in blue, then full text is not available. Only the abstract level information is available. But if you really want the full text, then library is there for you. OK, so just identify that paper, then go to the library and download it. Otherwise, abstract level information, you can always read it here itself. Right? OK. So when, when you click on this, again, this will appear before you. Again, for this particular paper, then you know 36 references are there. So you click on this. Again, all those 36 papers will appear before you. Like this, there is no end. OK, like, you know, so in one go, you can complete entire literature review work here itself. So, so this is what I wanted to share with you. And the whatever the information that you collect through chart is this you know, particular tool in this research habit. So those can be imported and exported to other reference management tools. If you have already created some references in, uh, in a Zotero or Mendeley, so those can be directly you know, imported to you know, uh, Research Rabbit. And similarly, the, the references that you collect from Research Rabbit can also be taken to the uh, other reference management tools. Okay, this is how we can uh, make use of AI tools in research. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude my sessions. If there are any questions, I would be happy to answer. Okay, so I once again uh, you know, extend my sincere thanks to the organizers, especially the Animai Chan Saha sir for giving me the opportunity to share some of my thoughts with the participants. So I'm really sorry for uh, the interruption that uh, was there you know, because of this internet connection. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anand sir, for your yes, sir. nice and very, very important uh, lecture. And uh, uh, with a hands-on also uh, uh, about the... Yeah. About the topic application of AI and academic research activity, the, the session was very interesting. And uh, uh, it can also be seen from the chat box that uh, today, uh, up to now, we don't have any uh, questions in the chat box, but uh, in your session, sir, we have a lot of questions in chat box. So we can take question from the chat box. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just I'm going through the chat, bo chat box. Yes, sir. Uh, if... Uh, there is one question. So somebody asked uh, Madhupurna. Uh, so she wants to know uh, the uh, the best software for plagiarism checking. Okay. So as far as my experience is concerned, both Turnitin and Drillbit are very very efficient softwares. But since we have access to Drillbit software free of cost, because there is no need for the university to spend any extra amount. And as far as the AI feature is concerned, so uh, Drillbit is more efficient than uh, Turnitin because Turnitin people, if they want to, you know, uh, want the university is uh, to use the AI feature, then so they are charging premium amount. Okay. So if you consider all these things, then Drillbit is the better software for this purpose. Okay. So that I, I believe I answered your question. And the second question is, but after summarizing, if Drillbit shows 100% AI, then what? Uh, this is a very good question because as of now, so uh, in India, we do not have any governing policy to govern the usage of AI 
okay uh, as far as only plagiarism so if there is any plagiarism concern the universities can take action against the student otherwise ask student to you know make modification but as far as ai is concerned if the student is taking the help of chat gpt or google bard so there is no control over it because when we put that same into the turnitin software or drillbit so we will we can get the ai detection uh, you know report but that report we cannot use against the you know student because we do not have any governing thing okay so the, the as of now uh, ai content matching even if it is shown there is no concern okay so there is no uh, need to worry about that only plagiarism so you have to fix that error okay uh, but as far as ai is concerned so as of now we do not have any uh, uh, guiding principles okay so i hope this answer you got and uh, what is the difference between google assistant and google bard okay so google assistant is something you know so which you uh, you can directly ask google assistant to you know search something for you but you know google bard is a completely language enhancement model like so you can use uh, you know google bard to do whatever that you want to do google assistant is so something you know, so if you do not have uh, you know time to search go to a particular website so you can ask google assistant to you can give a voice command to the google assistant to you know go to this website so i want to you know check the website of tiss please visit that website so so without you entering any url so the google assistant will help you you know make the things to you and even if you want to make phone calls google assistant will help you but uh, it is totally different google bard is totally different it's a language enhancement model which can be used for other purposes uh, and uh, there is one more question uh, um, one second how far how far uh, one second uh, let me how far the drill bit check the indian language whether any test has been done by a team so unlike turnitin so this is the another feature that uh, you know that makes the drill bit uh, more efficient like drill bit has the capabilities to search other regional languages like so bengali hindi and all so uh, they have a dedicated research team this particular drill bit company and they have incorporated all these features after testing only okay so when the infinitnet has shortlisted this particular software for you know used by all the universities they must have you know done all these researches you need not worry about the efficiency of the software okay if the content so if you want to you know if you have you know written something you know so by copying or you know, by making use of some some literature which is published in bengali language or in kannada or tamil okay so if the same text is available online already then there will be a match okay okay so then if that content is not available on the internet or in any other database if it is only available in the print version so in that case uh, every software has their own limitation okay so in that sense so drillbit is uh, you know much better so when no software is available then so drillbit is the only software that is available for us to do all those things okay so as far as the efficiency is concerned so it is more efficient so uh, the certified uh, thing okay so already experts have done the tests on this okay and what is the number of uh, backend database drill bit covers like uh, so number of uh, you know tests that you can carry i i, I believe this you want to ask how many times you can check your documents like so basically so all the research scholars are uh, given with 50 50 documents like you know so in one year okay so in this particular 2024 so you are given assigned with a 50 documents like you know so up to 50 times you can check your documents not frequently only 50 times okay so but once you exceed that 50 number number 50 then so you can approach your university and university will again allow you to either uh, provide you more uh, you know a number like you know so you can increase another 10 times they can allow you okay like basically it is limited to 50 times okay 50 okay and then there are other questions is it safe to upload the unpublished article on these tools with the perspective of publishing in future so that is why i told you so when i was demonstrating this uh, turnitin i told you so when you try to upload your paper so there are two options given so one is you have an option to upload it by default it will go to the repository standard repository so if it goes to the standard repository again second time when you do the checking na so the same paper your paper will be matched with your same paper which was submitted earlier so that is why so while uploading itself so you have to make it sure so you are not submitting it to the standard repository you are submitting just for a you know checking purpose okay so that you need to you know uh, take care of oh. 
না না আচ্ছা আচ্ছা Okay, uh, since our speaker is under the technical breaches, let me highlight one question by uh, Sumati Kumari. Uh, our question is, yeah, Dr. Bhadraman is there. So the... Uh, mute us, sorry. You are just muted. Uh, Anandji, please unmute yourself. You are not audible. ডিপোজিটরি <laughs> So while uploading for the plagiarism checking, there are two options available. One will go to standard repository. By default, it will go to standard repository. But you have to make sure that you are not submitting it to the standard repository. Okay. There is an option just to, you know, checking purpose. Just for checking purpose, that option is there and you have to go with that option. Okay. So if you want me, me to show it again, so I can demonstrate and show it if there is a time available. But in Turnitin software, that 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 provision is made. Okay, so you should not submit it to the standard repository. If you are not submitting it to the standard repository, then it is very much okay. So it is okay to submit and check your plagiarism reports. Okay, there is no harm in it. Okay, nothing will happen to you. So even if it goes to uh, standard repository, you know, by mistake, then also you need not worry because. the matching will be done with your own paper okay so that will be shown clearly in the report and you need not worry about that the publishers will you know understand that that thing okay yeah in addition to this uh, dr dadoni let me just uh, substantiate your uh, explanation uh, to miss uh, kumari see uh, in the drill bit software there is the option if you want if you do not want to submit your unpublished documents in the repository that option is open there but my suggestion is you do submit there you do submit there before formal any publication of thesis awards why this is required because you know in library science and in the publication industry there is one 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 question that how do you understand and what do you mean by zero period citation or pre publication citation means if you wanted to check this article today let's say today is 19th of uh, february 2024 your article will be published another after 6 months or 8 months in the meantime society publication industry will not be safe some other people in the same area may do what identical work the moment he or she will upload his or her paper your paper since it has been uploaded in the uh, drill bits uh, database so you will get citation automatically that your paper has been matching with the similarity of my submission of today's paper which has already not been published in the any journal or any thesis or any book chapter like that so my suggestion is that do submit whenever you found any unpublished document do submit it in the repository software that is this drill bit or tanitin or what is that 
the moment you will submit that, you will get zero period citation or free publication citation. That's the features. But if you wanted to come into any debate, if I don't submit it, what is the harm? Harm is that you cannot submit that. No one will force you to submit. Thing is that your citation will be counted after getting only publication. And in the meantime, anybody uh, submit it in the repository, then he or she will get submission of earlier than your publication date. So that's the thing. If I will take another session of these things, then I will make uh, uh, different you know, explanation on this area because I am also dealing in this area. What is called publication methodology? Why, how shall I just uh, increase my research visibility? This is the first part of increase pre research or pre published research visibility. I mean, getting citation even before publication of any documents. So that is my humble submission and admission to my friends and given by. My esteemed colleague, uh, Dr. Doran. Thank you. Any, any no, no, one more question. Sir. One more question from Anupam Devnath. Sir, what uh -huh. is about perplexity AI? Uh, sir, uh, can you please uh, repeat the, uh, that question? Please. Sir, please uh, read that question once again, please. Sir, what, sir, what about perplexity AI. It has been raised by the Anupam Devnath, sir. It, uh, it was just before the Savita Kumari, sir. So uh, I'm not uh, I'm not able to understand the question exactly. Uh, perpetual perplexity AI, sir. I am sharing in the chat box, sir. Okay, sir. one second. You got the sir. So one second. I... Yeah, participants, concern participants may raise the voice. One second. One second. Not, if you are on the board, you just uh, uh, talk with the, the speaker because your question is not estimated. Yes, sir. Sir, I am yeah. asking that, uh, sir, just like ChatGPT and uh, Google Bart, which is now Gemini, so there uh -huh. is another one called per uh, Perplexity AI. Okay. So there are, uh, Okay, so you want to know more about that. So there are many uh, AI tools coming up. Okay, so ChatGPT and Google Bard are tested ones. They are also still under uh, development. Okay, there are many tools, uh, you know, upcoming tools are there. So there, there will be many tools, but I have not used to be, you know, uh, frank with you. So I have not, uh, you know, used this particular tool as of now uh, because I'm unable to make any comment on this because I have not used it. Then I'm not in a position to make any comment. Thank you, sir. So Any I think there question? is no more, there there is no more questions, sir. Uh, it is also an AI tool like Bard or ChatGPT. Uh, so you want to uh, ask this question about a consensus tool? Uh, then a consensus is not a you know AI tool you know like Bard yeah. and ChatGPT. It is a basically it is it's a search engine. Okay, and the research rabbit is not again it's a mapping tool AI based mapping tool research mapping tool. Okay, Chart GPT and Google Bard are they are totally different. Okay, they are language enhancement models. Thank you. One one more question, sir. Can we use Grammarly for plagiarism checking? Yes, we can make use of Grammarly for plagiarism checking. Okay, then but that software Grammarly software is not that efficient with regard to plagiarism, as I told you, because. Uh, Turnitin and plagiarism, they have access to vast amount of databases and the reports that they generate are, you know, accurate. Okay, that is why Grammarly should basically be used for grammar enhancement. Okay, not for plagiarism, but that, that option is still there. But in order to just cross check, you can do that. But if you really want to, you know, depend on something, some report, then so you better go for other dedicated tools like Turnitin, Drillbit or... Yes, that is still going on. I think other two, 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 three minutes it will become to close. <laughs> okay, okay, great, madam, great. I, I want to listen. Uh, uh, some somebody the same person has uh, you know mentioned that because uh, this this 
this grammarly tool is already provided to them and uh, whether they can make use of the grammarly tool for plagiarism checking so there is no no nobody is stopping you to you know make use of the software so you can obviously make use of the software but uh, i believe that your university may be having access to drill bit also drill bit also so please make use of the drill bit which is a dedicated software so turnitin is also very good but as far as plagiarism is concerned so it is not that efficient okay so i have to be you know very clear in this sense grammarly is basically used for grammar enhancement like writing style and all but that option is there i i i i know that that option is there you can you make use of that software uh, that option there is no harm in that but still so it is better to use other softwares like turnitin or drillbit thank you so thank you sir okay. your session was very interesting sir and because we have got a lot of uh, doubts from the participant side and the session was quite different from the other uh, sessions uh, it has given a, a lot of insight for uh, for our uh, research and uh, academic activity so thank you sir thank you uh, uh, sir i want yeah sir, thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir thanks for the opportunity yeah. thank you. you you are not only uh, today speaker but also you are help us to organize the event by searching some other experts in the field so this kind of cooperation please continue to sustain us to survive us in the profession okay so thank sure, you sir, so sure. much sure. thank you yes sir thank sure, you sir sure. sure sir thank you sir okay so you... good evening yeah so sir there and we will continue our relationship and we will keep in touch with each other for future course of journey okay so thank you participants thank you. yeah now participants are informed uh, that uh, we are winding today's session here and uh, we were requested to to join tomorrow session at uh, 10:30 sharp we have yes sir before 10:30 we will start the session at 10:30 sharp the the speaker will be dr manoj kumar mishra from the nit raur kila so please Join on time. Vinod Kumar Mishra. Yeah, Vinod. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So let us wind up. Wind up this today. Uh, day one. All the session is closed properly. So let me say all the participants good evening and get disconnected temporarily and we we'll join tomorrow at eight.